a man I know and his teenage son. We're in a terrible car wreck not long ago. They both walked away uninjured. And the man's family and a great host of his friends joined in a refrain of praise to God, saying and posting, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. That's what they said. That's what they posted. And everyone who knows the man and his son, including and especially me, are overjoyed that they lived, that no one in the wreck was seriously hurt. And I'm glad that the man's family's first response was to thank God. And I'm very happy. I mean it. I am very happy for God to get all the credit. And I wouldn't dare, I mean this, I wouldn't dare criticize someone's reaction to a near-death experience. But something itches. Something itches for me theologically when proclamations about God's goodness are made when something good happens. These days, every time I hear about a car crash, I'm reminded that a few years ago, a very, very close friend of mine was killed by a drunk driver. It was, a, it was around lunchtime, lunchtime, on a sunny Saturday afternoon. And my friend was driving his six-year-old daughter home from a soccer game when he was hit and killed instantly by a drunk driver who ran a red light at about 80 miles an hour in a downtown shopping district. What I struggle with is that if God saved the lives of the man and his son, Where was God when my friend was killed? That, that, that son still has his father. Thanks to God. But my friend's daughter, she lived, does not have hers. Is that God too? What makes it even more confusing to me is that the drunk driver who killed my friend got off on a legal technicality. He did not serve any time for his crime. He is alive and free in the world today. And I don't know the man. Don't know him. But I wonder about him. You know? I wonder if he thanked God when he was told he wouldn't go to prison. I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him if he did. I wonder if he said when he was acquitted, God is good all the time. I don't know. I don't know the answers to any of the questions that I am asking. 
but I do know that they are Good Friday questions. They are questions, maybe some variation is something you wrestle with. They are questions that Good Friday has the strength to bear. That's why I'm not ashamed to ask them. You see, on Good Friday, with tears in our eyes, we wrestle with death. Why do some people die tragic deaths and others escape unharmed? Surely God doesn't have anything to do with that. Surely that's just the way the world spins, the way it's always worked from the very beginning. I was reminded that shortly before his own death, Jesus went to a place called Gethsemane to pray. And the gospel text says that when he went there, he was deeply grieved and agitated. The text says that Jesus threw himself on the ground. It literally says that. And he prayed that anguished prayer that you know so well. Father, Abba, Papa, Daddy, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And then he said, your will be done. And do you remember, I'd forgotten this. He prayed that prayer three times in anguished succession. Tears streaming from his eyes, he prayed three times. Let this cup pass from me. And then carrying his cup, he was carted off to be killed. Jesus was not spared, was he? He was subject to the tragedy of death just like anybody else. And perhaps that's the point. Death comes when it comes. I know everybody in this room in your way, in your precious, tender way. You know that hard reality. And God does not intervene, it seems, to stop it. That's just the way the world spins. At some point, not too long from now, every one of us, one by one, will go the way of the cross. That is, each one of us will die. And the others will go on for a time without us, then they too will yield. I have a sense that Jesus desperately wants us to do one thing with the absolute inevitability of death. One thing. Let death remind us moment to moment, to look freshly on the absolute preciousness of our own lives and the lives of everyone we know. I don't know. I don't know what the hell God is good all the time means. But I do know that the goodness of God is found in the fact of you all. That is the fact that God made human beings in such a way that it is possible for us to focus on love and love alone right up till the day we die. I was reminded of a story 
that Eddie Hillisom told about her time in the concentration camps during World War II. We have Eddie's diaries. I think she wrote down everything she saw and heard. One entry goes like this. A young woman who recently gave birth was waiting to be put on a train to Auschwitz, a camp where she would surely die. She had just been released from prison. The Nazis had her captured and imprisoned. And she said to Eddie, Eddie, my husband was in prison as well. I won't tell you what they did to him, but my God, he was tough through it all. They sent him on, said the woman, through on the train last month. I was in my third day of labor, she said, so I couldn't go with him. But how brave he was. How brave my husband was as they marched him onto that train. That's what she said, y'all. And Eddie wrote, this woman was radiant as she spoke. The woman continued, perhaps I shall find him again. And then she laughed defiantly. Then she said, they may drag us through the dirt, but we'll come out all right in the end. And then she looked around at all the crying babies. And she smiled at Eddie. And she said, I'll have good work to do on the train. You see, I still have lots of milk. She laughed defiantly. She knew she would be killed. And she was determined without question, unflinching, to live until she died. And not just live until she died, but live giving life, the very milk of her own flesh and blood body, to the babies who are also being carted off to their deaths. I don't know what in the hell God is good all the time means. But I do know that God made his children. Can you believe it? God made his children in such a way, in such a magnificent, sacrificial, wild way that we are capable of deep saving goodness when we choose to live in the great force field of love until the very day that we die. I don't know what God is good all the time means. But I do know that death is a part of life, not the end of it. And that is good.